We're here at the Quality Plants and Seedlings Nursery in Werribee and the team of experts here are going to give us some tips on how to look after seedlings. If you've got your very first seedling and you're taking it home or you've seen some of the seedlings that are being planted in the school, kindergarten, community veggie gardens and you want to go, how do I look after this? How do I make sure it thrives? We're going to answer all those questions today and more. I've got Mark with me who does this professionally. This is like your whole career, isn't it? It's Correct. understanding how to grow food from seeds and from seedlings. It's got to be ready in three weeks. Oh, they're so perfect. They're three weeks old. They're three weeks old today. They'll be three weeks in the hydro. You guys actually support the Victorian School Gardens program, don't you? That's correct. We donate a lot of plants to the School Garden program. What is this amazing machine you've got here? This Mark? is an air seeding machine. It fills our trays with soil, punches holes into the trays, then a vacuum sealed drum, sucks the seed on individually. Once the drum gets around to the bottom, it releases the seed. That's amazing. This is like my heaven in here. Yeah. So in here, we grow all our seedlings. This is just our online store where we have a combination of all different varieties. There are three main things you need to factor in in order to keep your seedling alive and to turn it into food that you can enjoy. Sun, water and food. So when I talk about food, I'm talking about plant food. Some people will talk about soil nutrition, soil health. Basically, plants need to eat just like we do, especially edible plants. So plants that turn into fruits, vegetables, herbs, they need even more food than ordinary plants. And that's because they're busy turning plant nutrient into people nutrient so we can eat the food and become healthy and get all the vitamins and minerals that we need to thrive. So Mark, if someone has got a seedling and they've never grown one before, can I pull one of those out? Yeah. Someone's got one of these and they have no idea what to do with it. What is the very first thing they need to do to make sure it survives until it gets into the ground? Best thing to do is wrap it in a paper towel with, uh, that's been moistened. Don't let it dry out at any stage. Don't leave it flat on, the, on your kitchen bench or in a dark space. Even you pop it in a cup of water with a short, small amount of water in it, and it holds it up vertically. That will keep it moist until you get your garden bed ready. Ideally, you want to get them in the ground as quick as possible. When people think about watering plants, they often water the plants That's but right. it's not the plant that needs the water is it it's, it's the, the roots, roots. Correct. correct so how do plants drink <laughs> basically <laughs> plants drink through their roots they transpire up so you don't actually have to wet the leaves you can just By wet the soil by you mean sucking, sucking, it up. The, sucking the water they drink up. from their roots yeah yep. so watering the soil is is better than actually just watering on top of the plant and you can actually harm the plant by watering the plant on a hot day, you can, can't you? You can. You can burn them. So on a hot day, if you were to water the leaves and then the sun basically yep. hits that water, it can almost have the opposite effect. Can't Correct. It? So you're better off to water the, the soil, soil or the dirt and leave the leaves dry if possible. Is yep. that right? That's correct. So if you go around in the farms in the summertime, you'll see them watering in the morning and watering in the evening. They try to avoid watering through the day. Now, ordinarily, most plant roots are white. They don't always look as neat as this. If they've come from somewhere else, they might be a bit messy uh, and they look like little strings almost. But this is really cool because when you've got some root vegetables like beetroots, the roots are the color of the vegetables. So this will be a red, red beetroot. beetroot and you can see the roots are also red. And this will be a yellow beetroot. Correct. Golden beetroot. Golden beetroot. And you can see the roots are golden. So above the soil, all you see is this, but the most important part of the plant that you actually need to look after is this. So Mark, how, if this was to dry out completely, how long would it last before it just died? 
in summer, like one day, if it's completely dry and flat, it may regain, it'll grow again, but it won't form its true shape when they're really young like this. In the morning, in the afternoon, just use a water can or a very small water can. If you can keep them moist for the first two weeks, it's very critical. Because you can imagine, can't you? And I'm going to pick up some spring onions here as well and some bok choys here. If you pop those in the ground, oh, look how cool these are. If you put that in the ground, the soil is going to come up to here, but the roots are down to here. So as soon as the soil is, is dry, even down to as deep as a finger, finger. that can't access any water, That's can correct. it? So the top of the soil, while they're young, has to be kept constantly moist, moist but not yep, too not wet. Not flooded, just moist. So how long would it take, for example, for that root system to grow down to about here? Two weeks. Two weeks. So two in weeks. two weeks' time, yep. they'll be much sturdier. But until then, they have to be kept constantly moist. Constantly moist, because the roots don't just grow down. They grow like a ball, mm. more or less. So you'll see all these fine root hairs coming out. When you plant them and you think you've pulled it out and had a look, you've actually torn half the roots off. Mm. So whatever you do, do not pull them out to look to see if the roots have actually taken off. <gasps> Keep them in because be we do get we do work. get people doing that and saying it died <sighs> after I checked it. Yeah. Yeah. So the roots are almost more important than the plant, aren't they? Correct. Yep. Yeah. This is a cos lettuce. A cos lettuce, if you were just to plant this on its own, a little four inch pot would be ideal. Going into winter, keep it in the sun as much as possible. So if you've got a cos lettuce seedling and no vegetable garden, no fancy pots, no. but you've just got a little tiny pot, pot, you can grow that to a full lettuce? Correct. Yep, in a four inch pot, they'll grow fine. So I've just picked up some parsley here. Same goes with this. Could that grow in a small pot? It could grow in a small pot on its own, no problem. Let's talk about edible plants compared to normal plants. If you were to put a normal plant outside in your garden, it's going to do okay in most circumstances. But edibles require a bit more, don't they? They do. What sort of nutrients do edibles need that normal garden plants don't need and why? If you were in a field situation or in a, even in a little pot, you put a slow-release fertiliser in there, which will take anywhere between two and four weeks to dissolve and you follow up with some foliar applications like your seaweed or your sea sole or any of those products that you can find. So seaweed that people find at the beach is actually something that growers use to feed plants. That's right. Why? They do that <laughs> and it is... I'm putting you on the spot, aren't I? And even as a commercial grower and a commercial nursery, we use these products in our nursery on a weekly basis. There's a, a rhyme that everyone knows or a, a marketing song. Don't forget the sea salt. Yeah. You can use any seaweed product. Any you? seaweed product. We do see um, very good results, especially in the root system at an early stage. It is critical to have a lot of roots because then obviously your plant can take nutrient, it can transpire and it can survive and prevent itself from catching disease. Mark, if people don't have a vegetable garden set up and they're wanting to find a space in their garden or some soil in their garden to grow in, what's one thing that they could add to it that might improve it enough that they could grow food? Compost. Compost makes a world of difference. You can get really old soil that's very heavy. You add enough compost to it, it will lighten it up, it will aerate it. That's what we look for, good aeration. Um, once you've got good aeration, it will drain well. And it's also filled with nutrients too, Correct. isn't it, compost? Yep. So it's Correct. got everything. It's got yep. the right texture, it's got the right nutrients. And as a product... And it retains moisture? It retains moisture. Yeah. You can never add too much. So if you've got uh, fertiliser of some sort, of any nature, whether it's a granular slow release, one, you can add too much of it and it can affect the plant. Whereas compost, you can never add enough. Could you grow straight into compost? You could, you could. You'll probably find that it will drain out really quickly, but it is it is the ideal method to any soil is to add compost. So if you were to put one of these into old soil that had no nutrients in it, what would happen to it? It will sit there and just look like that for a long time. It won't grow. <laughs> it won't grow. It won't grow. And we get people asking us, why are my plants <laughs> growing? They're normally tucked into a corner um, against the fence where there's no sun or they've just planted in the same spot every year and never added any compost or any nutrient 
and they literally will just sit there. They, they won't, won't die, grow. but they just won't grow. Okay, so you talked about sun. Sun, Sun's sun important. is critical. So let's just look at this space for a minute. Yeah. We're in a sort of a, a protected outside growing space, but this gets as full much sun. sun as possible. Yep, full sun. This time of the year, full sun. You need as much sun as you can. Sun is your best friend. What's the minimum amount of direct sunlight you could have for your veggie seedlings to grow well? Six hours. Six hours um, you'll need at least. So any north facing wall um, without a restriction on your west side is the ideal ideal place. And direct sun. Direct, yeah. direct. Yeah. As in like the sort of sun that makes you squint on a hot day. Even though you can't see it, we'll position our outbuildings away from the shade area so there's no shadowing at all in any direction. So even the tanks are set back, hot houses are set back, and we do see, even though you would think we're crazy, a difference in the size of the plants when it's next to that pole right there. Really? You will see a difference. Wow. Just one pole, there'll be differences throughout the nursery. Because it's shading them? Because it's shading them. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Sun. All right, so if you are planting your seedlings at home, let's recap. There are three things you have to get right. As much sun as possible. Correct. Minimum. Hello, truck. We'll just wait for the red apple truck to go past. As much sun as possible, minimum six hours of direct out sunlight a day, but as much as possible. You need water. You need to keep those seedlings watered maybe even twice a day twice while they're day, tiny. Yeah. And then after two weeks, they'll be a little bit sturdier. They will. And something we haven't covered, which some people might think is obvious, some people might not, they need drainage, don't they? Because too much they water do. can be a problem too. They do. So there has to be holes in your in pot pots. or strawberry containers. Strawberry work containers really well. Really for well. Growing. Yep. You don't even need a pot, you need a strawberry container. Sun, water, and nutrients. So normal soil won't cut it. If you want to add one thing, add compost. If you want to add like 10 things, what are some other things that you can bang into your soil that's like, just say the sky's the limit, there's no budget, what are you buying to make your soil amazing? If it was me, yeah, I would have a small thin base of about one inch or 25 centimeters of rock, rock. in the bottom, okay. like a scoria, mm -hmm. just to, to avoid the drainage being blocked. Mm -hmm. Then I would mix it with compost, perlite, a slow release fertilizer, and mulch on top. You don't really need to go any further than that because then one, you you guaranteed drainage, two, you're guaranteed nutrient, and three, you're guaranteed moisture retention with your mulch on top. And are we gonna then end up with beautiful plants that look you'll, healthy? You'll have a very good product. Yay, you have a very good product. thank you. Wow. That's, that's yours, Christy. <laughs> they look so good. Uh, aren't they good? You like broccoli, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Look. Look at 